So we have five kilograms of water that's starting at five degrees Celsius and 15 kilograms of iron that's starting at 70 degrees Celsius. And then we're gonna drop the iron into the water. And the question is, what's gonna be the final temperature? So let's go through this together. All right, now the first thing to do here is to label our points on our graph. So to start with, try to put in a dot for the initial position of the water. Try to put in a dot for the approximate initial position of the water. Okay, that looks good. So here's the initial position of the water. And now let's put a dot in for the initial position of the iron. Hey, Corona. Oh, this isn't going to work as nicely as I thought. I thought the heating curve would work better here. So the reason why it's not working that well is because if you put the iron here, it seems like you're saying that it's a liquid. All right, but uh, I don't know. Let's just uh, go for it. So let's put the iron here, um, even though uh, here we really have solid iron. All right, but I'll put the iron here. So we have liquid water, and we can say this is the region of solid iron, just to try to use the same curve. Maybe the heating curve doesn't work as great as I thought. So here's the initial position for the water. And here's the initial position for the iron. Notice we have two initial positions, because we have two different substances. Now, what is going to happen when you drop the iron in the water? What's going to happen to the temperatures? That's right. And what can we say about their final temperatures? It'll probably be somewhere in between. Yeah, good. And one other thing, their final temperatures will be equal, right? Because as long as the temperatures are different, there will still be a heat transfer. I think we were just saying, so the iron here is going to be transferring heat to the water, right? Remember that heat is an energy transfer that occurs when one thing is hotter than another. Heat is an energy transfer that occurs when one thing is hotter than another. So when will we get to equilibrium? We won't get to equilibrium until they're at the same temperature, and then no more heat will be transferred. So there's only going to be one final position. Here's the final position for both the iron and the water. The final position, they both have the same temperature. So the water is going to be moving this way, and the iron is going to be moving this way. Again, we're kind of abusing the graph because the iron wouldn't really be liquid here. But anyway, they're both moving to the same temperature over here. So that's going to be a key point. Uh, at the final position, they both have to have the same temperature. That's what the question is asking us for, the final temperature. All right, now let's think about the heat transfers here. There's going to be a heat transfer involving the water, and there's going to be a heat transfer involving the iron. Now, if you think about it, and if this is odd, uh, these heat transfers have to add up to zero. Because any heat that is transferred from one of the substances positively has to be, uh, any heat that's that is lost by one of the substances negatively is going to be absorbed by the other substance positively. Um, we're assuming here that we have an insulated container where the only heat is between transferred between the two objects. So if we assume we have an insulated container and all the heat is uh, just being transferred between the two objects, um, the total heat transfer should be zero. By the way, which of these will be positive and which will be negative? Um, so the water will be positive, the iron will be That's right. Um, and they'll be equal in magnitude, so they come to zero overall. Uh, but we don't actually have to put in the positives and negatives, because if we use the formula, it'll get that for us correctly on its own. All right, so let's start plugging in. Now, which of these formulas should we use here? 
you know, the top formula over here. By the way, I can't resist uh, saying a good memory aid here. Since so many people who study this subject are pre-med, it's helpful to say this looks like MCAT. Q equals MCAT and helps people to remember this formula over here. Obviously, this isn't really an A, but the delta looks like an A. All right, so just as a memory aid. All right, so we use the Q equals MCAT formula. Um, so let's figure out the Q of the water here. Um, but it's very important here that we're plugging in the mass. Well, let's actually work that out separately. So Q water. So what should I plug in for the mass? Take your time. What would that be? Oh, sorry, five kilograms. Right. Yeah, I'm not going to plug in the units anymore for simplicity. And what should we plug in for C? We we'll have to look that up. Yeah. So that's our specific heat table on page two sixty five. Specific heats. All right, and the delta T would be the most complicated. What can we plug in for delta T? Um, T final yeah, and because this is a delta T, we don't need to translate into Kelvins. With delta T's, we can use Celsius instead of Kelvins as long as everything is in Celsius. Okay, so uh, that would give us uh, this. So I'm gonna plug in for Q water over here, five, times 41.84 times T final minus 5. All right, and now we have to figure out Q iron. Um, 15. Times 4.47. The C for iron is 4.47. Good. By the way, right, well, we'll just plug that in here then. So 15, 447, T final minus 70. And that's still equal to zero. By the way, notice this is going to be positive because the final temperature is going to be bigger than 5 degrees. And this term is going to be negative because the final temperature will be less than 70 degrees. So as I promised, the equation is taking care of the positives and negatives for us. We don't have to plug in positives and negatives here. The equation takes care of that for us. This is going to automatically come out positive, and this will automatically come out negative. Um, this formula, you have to put in the signs. But this formula takes care of the signs on its own. So it would have been a mistake to put an extra negative sign here. We don't want an extra negative sign here because the formula is already coming out negative because T final here is less than 70. All right, so in this case, we trust the formula to get the signs for us. All right, now we have a lot of math on our hands. So what would be some things we can start doing to simplify the math here? Yeah, maybe we should have done that over here before we even plugged in. Okay. And that gives us... Good. Still got a lot of math here. Is there anything else we can start doing to sim keep simplifying this? Um, multiply the TF and divide. Then we can now use the distributive law. Now is a good time to use the distributive law. So what does that give us? Looking good.
I think maybe I made a mistake. I think you were right and I was wrong. Yeah, you were right and I was wrong. I forgot that there was a negative sign over here. So, 